this is Jim Duffy of Refining Fire Chilies, www.superhotchilies.com. And in today's cooking video, we're going to make barilla, barilla tacos. Now, we have to do this in sections or in different phases to do it right. The first thing we have done is we have seasoned a couple of chuck roasts, probably about six pounds total, and we seasoned them really good with two rubs. Hardcore Carnivore Tex-Mex and Hardcore Carnivore Meat Chilada, which is a Texas chili lime rub. Now, we're going with both because one has spices that the other doesn't have. So instead of adding spices later on, I used both. And you know what? This is the first time making barilla, which is spelled B-I-R-R-I-A. This is the first time making it. So, you know, maybe next time I just go with one of them. Or I go with one of them and add some uh, spices myself. Traditionally, a lot of the spices that go on barilla are cumin, lime, chili, paprika, smoked paprika, salt, pepper, oregano, and sometimes people add a little bit of cinnamon. Uh, I might add a little bit of cinnamon to the broth, or the consomme, as we call it, that you're going to dip your barilla tacos in later. And uh, we'll just see. This is our first go at this. I'm sure it's going to taste good, but I might want to tweak it the next time I do it. So anyhow, we're going to put these on the smoker at 220 degrees, uh, Camp Chef pellet grill smoker, 220 degrees, high smoke setting. That's what they call it, the high smoke setting. And we're going to put it in here for three hours. And then we'll be cooking the meat. Oh, there's a squirrel coming in my yard. Hmm. Squirrel. Squirrel. We're getting doggies. Good doggies. Keep that squirrel away from the peppers and tomatoes. So the next phase is we're going to be making a broth, a beef, uh, we're going to make a broth and we'll get to the ingredients on that or consomme and we'll be cooking the meat down in that for a few hours later on. That'll be the next phase. So right now is the grilling phase. We're going to put this meat on the smoker for three hours, seasoned chuck roast, and then we'll go to the next phase. So we're going to get ready to put this meat in and just for a quick review, these are the two spices that we are using. Hardcore Carnivore Michelada and the Spice Blend Hardcore Carnivore Tex-Mex. And we'll have a link in the description of, so you can see all the Hardcore Carnivore products, okay? So let's get the grill set up. So again, the meat's gonna be in here for about three hours. And we're gonna put the tray below here to catch some of the juices, which is gonna go on our consomme or broth. 
that we'll be dipping our taco cooking in the meat in later and also we will be uh, dipping our tacos in at the end like kind of a French au jaw dip French dip except this is a Berea taco dip now one more thing about Berea is um, traditionally it's made with goat and the meats kind of stewed in a big pot but we figure we'll smoke the meat because that'll give the meat more flavor and more flavor is always a good thing okay so we'll come back later on to, rem to show you the meat and then we'll show you how we're gonna make our uh, consomme or broth for the meat to cook in for another few hours later on okay right now what you're looking at is the ingredients to make our consomme or broth whatever you want to call it broth or consomme we will be cooking the meat down in this in the second phase of the cooking of the meat and then later on this sauce that we're making this sauce they're making here the consomme will be something we dip our tacos in when our berea tacos are done so let's get started on what we have here on the table so we have some chilies here and these are polla, similar to chili DR bowl, but a little bit uh, less heat. These are cascabel. And they have kind of an earthy flavor. And these are pasilla. Okay? Dried pasilla. These here are chili tapin. Okay? Now, when you when you watch recipes for Berea online, people will use chili diarbo, they'll use ancho poblanos. I couldn't get any ancho poblanos here locally, but pasillas have a different, have a, not a different, a similar flavor profile. And some recipes, people will use anchos and pasillas. And some they use cascabels and some not. And some, they, they don't use polla, they use chili diarbo. And I've not seen any recipes online where they use tapin. So the chili tapin is going to give us some heat and a kick. That's why there's only a few of them. The cascabel will have a little bit of mild heat. The polla will have like a jalapeno heat. And the pasilla will be very mild. So what we're going to do is we're going to put these in our tray. Now... You want to get all the seeds out of your chilies as much as possible because seeds don't have any flavor and they don't contain heat. They're just going to give the, a, a bitter flavor, okay? So you want to get the seeds out of the chilies and the stems out of the chilies before you uh, add them to your sauce mixture. And also in the sauce mixture, we are going to add two sweet, small sweet onions. These are Vidalia. You don't have to use sweet onions. If you like more of a hot, pungent flavor, use the regular yellow or brown onions. Or if you want a little bit of sweet and pungency, get use red onions. I prefer the sweet onions because after you eat a meal with a lot of sweet onions in it or salsa, um, you don't really get that burping heartburn later on. That's why I like sweet onions. Plus they bring a little bit of sweetness. So I pretty much cut them into quarters and put them here in the pan. Then we're going to add a little bit of cilantro. Not too much, just a little bit. So there's some cilantro. You can also use dried coriander because coriander is cilantro. So you can buy use dried coriander. Now you can use garlic cloves or smashed garlic cloves, but we're going to use some chopped minced garlic that's in water. I like garlic a lot. I don't feel like peeling cloves. So I'm gonna add a couple of heaping, real heaping tablespoons to the mixture, okay? Then we're gonna add a little bit of cumin. Now even though our barbecue rubs or our meat seasoning rubs that we used might have a little bit of cumin in it, we're gonna add a little bit more cumin. I don't use a lot of cumin as a spice. It reminds me too much of the cheap packaged taco sauces. I mean, cumin is a wonderful spice, but I don't use a lot of it. So in some recipes I saw online, they used a lot. I'm just going to dash 
some of it down here. Then we're going to give it a little bit of oregano. And if you can get Mexican oregano, it's a different flavored oregano. But we're just going to put, oregano is a very powerful spice. So we're just going to sprinkle a little bit in there. Because in our two seasoning rubs, there's no oregano that I know of. Okay? Then the next thing we're going to add is these chipotle peppers in adobo sauce. You can get these online or at a Mexican grocery store. You might even get them in a Filipino grocery store because adobo is Filipino, but also a lot of Mexicans use adobo sauce in their cooking, okay? So these are chipotle peppers and adobo sauce, so that's gonna give us some other chili flavor. And chipotles are basically a smoked jalapeno. So we've added the chipotles in adobo sauce. Then we're going to add some tomato sauce or crushed tomatoes. Or if you want to get fancier and get a little bit more flavor, get some fresh tomatoes and smoke them and then chop them up and add them to the mix because they'll cook down in the mix. So we've got some tomato sauce. This is 29 ounces, one pound, 13 ounces. So that's 16 and 13 ounces. We're going to use about half of this. Okay. So now we've added the tomato sauce. And the final thing we're gonna add is beef broth, okay? Now we'll be getting some fats and oils from the meats that will drip down onto this tray as it finishes smoking. But we're gonna add some beef broth and we're gonna add probably about two cups. We might add the rest later on so we have plenty of sauce. Now, once we, well, we're going to just add the whole thing. And this is how much? 32 ounces. Okay, so now that's added in. We're going to kind of just stir it around a little bit. Okay. Stir it around a little bit. Now you have two options when making your consomme or broth for the tacos and also for the cook down of the meat, because the meat's gonna cook in this. You have two options later on for your broth or consomme. The first option is you, after this mixture's cooked and after the meat's cooked in it for the second phase of the cooking, you can strain it through a strainer. Option two, you can remove the dried chilies you know, or if you've got a really high powered blender, you can just pour the whole thing into a blender or food processor and mix it up really good and blend it and chop it up and then use it that way. Either way, you're going to have plenty of flavor with your meat because your meat's going to cook down in this and then later on you're going to be dipping your tacos into this. So we're going to put this in the smoker. We've got about an hour left of the low smoking. We're gonna put it below the meat. So if any more drippings from the meat come off, they'll come off into the mixture. And so this is gonna smoke for about another hour, 220 degrees, 225. And then we're gonna turn it up to 275, 300. And we're going to put the meat in it. And then we're gonna cook that on low heat for about another two hours. Okay, so this is the progress so far on the Berea, Berea tacos meat. As you can see, the uh, chuck roast that's been seasoned with two kinds of seasoning is uh, from Hardcore Carnivore, the Tex-Mex and the chili lime chilada, or the mech or chilada, is uh, looking really good. And the sauce below it, which we showed you a little bit earlier in the video, is pretty much ready now to receive the meat. So that's what we're gonna do now.
careful not to drop any of this or the dogs will uh, have a nice treat. So we're just getting some of the meat out of the way so we can pull the tray with the sauce or broth or consomme, whatever you'd like to uh, call it. So we're gonna pull that out. And we are going to mix it around a little bit. Okay. Now we're gonna add our meat. Our chuck roast that's been cooking slow for over three hours. Ignore the meat on the right, that's another cooking video. I wonder if I'm gonna have enough room for all these pieces in here. We'll crowd them in if we have to. Sometimes people will take a Dutch oven or a cast iron skillet with a cover and put that in the smoker or barbecue or your oven and cook the meat down in that into the sauce. It looks like we're barely going to be able to get this sauce, this meat, all this meat in here. We've got two more pieces. When we shred the meat later on, the sauce will, will, be, will heat up again with the shredded meat. Trying to get as much of this meat submerged as possible, which is a challenge. Three uh, chuck roast over two pounds might just be a little bit too much for one tray. It'd be good to get all the meat as submerged as possible, but we can't. We get out a little bit more broth, uh, beef broth if we want. which is what we're gonna do. So we added a little bit more beef broth so we get the meat covered a little bit better. Okay. And so now we're gonna cover it with tin foil. Oh, we have one more piece of meat. Look at that, hiding in the back. And really not much more room for it. Ah, we squeezed it in there. So now we're going to cover this with foil. We're still at 225 in the smoker. And this other meat that I have on the side, which is in another cooking video, um, I'm gonna let it go on low smoke for another 15 minutes. I mean high smoke, which is 225. And then I'll remove that meat. And then I'll turn the heat up for this. Okay, so now we've taken the meat, the chuck meat that we had 
that we first we smoked for about two and a half to three hours at 220, season the meat. Then we put it in the consomme mixture, which you see right here, and we cooked it for another three to four hours. Now, depending on how thick the meat is, it might be three hours or four hours. You gotta kind of check it. If it, when, if it starts to fall apart when you hit it with a fork, then it's done. And then we let it rest overnight, and then we reheated it a little bit in the oven. Now, I wanna tell you that if you don't wanna keep it, the meat in this tray of the sauce, for the finishing aspect of it, go ahead, put it in your oven at 275 for three to four hours. It's gonna be the same thing as your grill, except you're not gonna be burning a lot of wood or a lot of coal for another three hours. You follow me? So, this is what the meat looks like. You see it? Now all that sauce and that flavor is in this meat. Look at how delicious this Berea taco meat is going to be. So the next thing is, I'm going to shred up the meat by hand. And I'm not gonna film me doing all this meat. I'm gonna shred up all this meat. It's just gonna fall apart, see? The dogs are standing by, hoping they get a piece of fat. Because if I get a chunk of fat, I'm not gonna mix it in with the meat. I'm gonna throw them the piece of fat, even though it'll be spicy. After I do that, I am gonna strain the broth into this tray, which I'm not gonna show you. Um, some people will take all the onions, the garlic, the dried chili peppers that you can see here, because these are soft now, and they'll put in a blender and blend it up. I'm not gonna do that. I don't feel like washing my blender or food processor. There's enough flavor in this broth, trust me that I don't need to mix up, blend all the ingredients. I'm just gonna pour it through a strainer into part of this tray, and then we'll make our tacos, okay? Our barilla tacos. So, here we are. Now we are going to make the finished product, which is the barilla, or properly pronounced, you say the word beer and then ria. So, beer, ria. I got corrected by a Mexican gentleman the other day when I was telling him about this. Because he didn't know what I was talking about. And then he said, oh, it said beer ria. Beer ria. Beer ria. I was saying barria. And if you're a really, really white middle class guy who doesn't know anything about Mexican pronunciation, you'd probably say barria. Or from New York. Hey, barria. Barria. So anyhow... We have our griddle set to, uh, I got this griddle at Walmart, so I don't have to do this in my kitchen. And it's set at about, I, I warmed it up at 400, it's down to 350. So the first step we do is we take the tortillas. I prefer the yellow corn or white corn. I do not like the flour. You can use flour if you want. But traditionally, Mexican tacos are made with corn tortillas, not flour, okay? So, put them on the griddle. Put them in the sauce that you cook the meat in. And then, put them on the griddle. Or frying pan, whatever you prefer. It's easier if I use my hands to pick these up. I'm serving these for myself. If I was cooking these for other people, then I would use my rubber gloves because I believe in food safety. My hands are washed, but I would still use rubber gloves. Okay, so now we have them on the griddle. I'd say for close to a minute because you want to you want to kind of get that sauce a little bit into the tortilla, which is what I'm doing right now. And... You want to wait till you start seeing it kind of bubble up, like it's starting to bubble up a little bit here and there, but you just want to be sure. Now, when I first made these, I followed this guy's video where he flipped them with the tongs. Uh, you don't want to do that. They'll rip. What you want to do is you want to take a spatula like this and flip them like a pancake. Because once they get the texture of being cooked a little while, they won't fall apart as easy. But right now, 
as you can see they're starting to what that one's breaking a little bit that one's got a little crack on the edge and that one does too now we have some cheese here this is a mexican cheese blend okay as you can see uh it's mexican cheese and it's uh monterey jack and cheddar you can use that uh some people prefer using mozzarella even though that's not part of the mexican dish but if you want to put in some cheddar or parmesan well next time i make these i'll probably go with cheddar or parmesan because i like that blend of cheese whatever cheese you like over here we have the barilla meat that we smoked and then later on cooked in the sauces. And then the sauce, you take the broth, like what's right here, use it for that. But you also use it for dipping your taco when you're, when you're eating it. So isn't that wonderful? Isn't that meat wonderful? Hope the camera's getting it all. Okay, so now it's time to flip these. So you kind of scoot under them, flip them over. Now they're easier to handle, okay? Now they're cooking on the opposite side of the tortilla, okay? And so now what we wanna do is we wanna add our cheese blend, okay? And you like a lot of cheese, put a lot of cheese. Okay? So we've got our cheese bled there now. And we'll just give it like about 10 or 15 seconds. And uh, the cheese is gonna start melting now. It's ni the, the tortilla on the opposite side is gonna get nice and crispy. And now we're gonna take our burrilla meat and we're gonna put it in the center of the corn tortilla or taco shell, whatever you wanna call it. As you can see, it's very, very juicy, which is why if you use this and dip this into a dipping sauce, I don't think you need to put salsa on this taco. Some people like to garnish it when it's done with uh, some chopped cilantro and chopped onion. If you like that, that's fine. But I don't see the point of putting salsa on a burrito taco when you're going to be dipping it in the sauce like an au jus, you know, like a French dip, every time you take a bite, okay? Uh so much sauce and so much juice in the meat and that why would you want to put salsa on it i guess you could if you make a real ca crappy birria that has no flavor then maybe you want to add salsa to it uh, i'm just saying but pretty much i don't think you need to do that now a lot of people will put a little bit of cheese on the meat after you put the meat on we're just going to put a little sprinkling because that's what we have left in the bowl and now that you see the cheese is melting, now it's time to gently take your taco. Oops, that cheese was sticking to that one and causing it to get stuck. Now you want to gently kind of flip it over, smush it down a little bit, see, like that, see that? Uh, you can wear rubber gloves or something when doing this. Uh, I used I was a welder for 38 years, so I'm used to handling hot stuff, so it doesn't bother me. But, you know, use the rubber gloves for food safety and so it's not so hot on your fingers because it's going to be a little bit hot. Yeah, I'm, I'm just using uh, my hands to help guide it over so the tortilla doesn't break. So now you're going to wait probably about 20 seconds and let it get really crispy on that one side, okay? And then the final thing we'll do is we will flip it over to the other side for about another 20, 30 seconds. And then they're ready to serve. Now, I wouldn't just hand it to a child or somebody right off the griddle like that because uh, it might be a little hot for their mouth. So maybe you want to let it just sit for a few seconds and cool off. But pretty much they're ready to serve. Once we get it flipped over again. So now we're going to just kind of like flip it over. See how it's getting a nice golden brown. And we're going to just, that one broke apart because it was stuck to the other tortilla with the cheese connecting them. And so when I went to go flip it, it tore a little bit, but that's fine. It's all gonna taste the same when it gets in your tummy anyway. Right? So we just wait a little bit. 
We're going to slide this griddle back a little bit out of the way. And about another 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Where's the doggies? There's Goliath. Goliath is hoping some food falls on the floor. The other two dogs, I think they're on the couch relaxing. We've had rain the last few days, so I wasn't able to finish the video till now. Um, the sun's trying to peek out through the clouds. You can see the pepper plants in the background. You can see my garden with squash and beans. And then over here is my some of my potatoes and sweet potatoes. Okay, that's enough of that. Let's get these off the griddle. So now, the birria, birria is done. They're done. Nice, crispy texture on the outside. Not hard like the store-bought box taco shells, which are terrible, but I'll eat them. And the way you serve it is you, you take sauce, the broth, or the fancy name, consomme, and you dip And you eat. Delicious. This is what I will be having for lunch today. Okay? Oh, well, this is how you make birria. Watch the whole recipe. Make it. Modify it if you like. Add different dried chilies to the mixture. Mild if you want it mild. Hot if you want some hotter chilies. Add more cumin if you like cumin. Add more oregano if you like oregano. Do whatever you want with the recipe. Modify it to where it's at your taste. More garlic, more onion, whatever you like. But you're going to enjoy these. We've already had about, I'd say, 25 people taste these over the last week. And uh, everybody loved them. And these are better than the ones I've had in San Diego, which San Diego is the place to get birria. It is. And these taste better than the ones I, I've eaten there before when I lived there. So this is Jim Duffy of Refining Fire Chilies. WWSuperHotChilies.com. And I hope uh, you've enjoyed the video. Take care.